Hello there, book reading friends. Um, this video is going to get longer than I want it to real fast because I haven't done an update video yet in January. Um, I talked about my backlist book of on TBR. I've talked about my year-long reading goals. I haven't talked about what I've actually read, and I've had a pretty busy, what is it now, 18th, 18, 19, 19 days. Um, so yeah, we're just going to jump right in and get going. Um, I'm taking part in something called Arc Apocalypse, which is just an attempt to get arcs off of my TBR. There's, um, I thought it was just me, but there are several of us hanging out together on Discord and, and encouraging one another to get these arcs read. I'm also doing um, Dabbling in the Pop Sugar in 52 Books in 52 Weeks challenges for the year. Um, I'm also doing something called Romanceopoly, which is a year-long romance reading um, challenge, so I get to indulge um, that guilty pleasure every so often. So um, we're going to jump right in because there's a lot that I read. Um, and some of them are literally um, either arcs or just for romanceopoly. And they're, for me, most romances tend to, to, to weigh out at about a three star, maybe a four star, the occasional five star if the rest of the plot's really good. I actually do have one like that in here. Um, but some of them are just fun, guilty pleasure indulgences. So we're going to jump right in. Um, original Sins, this is a might have book block, right? original sins is a prequel by logan fox to the malhaven series um it's actually a collection of short stories that kind of sets up the rest of the series um logan does create really nice characters i will say that um it, the, the romances are fairly predictable as far as understanding what the outcome is going to be but her characters are something you want to know, like you, you care about them in the story. Um, and a lot of romance authors tend to throw away the character for the sake of either the story or the steam, depending on the kind of novel that you're reading. Um, the next one was also a romance. Um, but this one has some, if you're going to do an insta love romance, which I said that the other day to somebody, like, what's insta love? Like that love at first sight, they're in love within the first 10 pages of the book, or you know they're going to be. Um, tends to work better if there's a pre-established relationship, like if you can get some flashbacks into their past together. This is called The Rancher's Inherited Family by Leslie North. Better picture than that if I get it away from the light a little bit. There you go. Um, it's McCall Ranch Brothers book one, books two and three delve into the other brothers. There are three brothers. The story begins when they are called back to the family ranch um, to hear the reading of the will. And the stipulation is they inherit the ranch together, but they all have to move in and live there for it's a year or something like that um understanding that they have lives there is an exception that if just one of them will move back that the others can take their time getting back the oldest brother has his own construction company it's easiest for him to move back while he's living there a cousin drops off her four-year-old daughter stops in to say hi and then leaves leaving her four-year-old daughter on the porch the cousin's kind of a mess um, in and out of rehab all kinds of problems um and this guy who thought himself a loner and a bachelor for life suddenly finds himself drawn into caring about this little girl. Um, the daughter of the family housekeeper that he'd known all of his life has taken over that job. And he begs her to stay on and try to help find somebody to take her place, but somebody that can also help take care of this little girl he has now inherited. And of course, you know from pretty early on that, of course, he's going to fall in love with the housekeeper and they're going to stay together, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it, again, was a very sweet read. Um, the insta-love made sense because they had a past. They had known each other as children, so the insta-love worked for me because they weren't total strangers when they met. Or total strangers at the beginning of the book. Um, this one also was an arc and a romanceopoly book, Blood Knot, for um, Tracy Cooper Posey, paranormal romance. Um, she's a healer who can heal just by touching, and she heals a vampire. And by healing the vampire, I mean he's not a vampire anymore but she needs his blood to survive, but she's not a vampire either. Um, and then you throw into the mix the fact that there are two factions of vampires, one who want vampires to be able to walk amongst humans with their identities clearly seen and, and, and prove that they're not always a threat, they're not just raging animals, and another group that likes the power and the fear that they instill, and so this causes a serious conflict, and they all get caught up in it. So... Again, pretty typical. This is one of those romances that caught me by surprise because the story was so good. It's actually a five star for me. Um, but it really confused me because the arc was was put out under one title and the title between that and publication date changed. So when I went looking for the book, I couldn't find the book. I found one with the right cover, but a different title, but the right synopsis. So 
I got an ARC entitled Unexpected Mistake, which is the cover that I have for you because I still have it on my Kindle. It has since been marketed under the title Unexpected Marriage. Um, Beck and Ruby, I'm in love. I think they are just the cutest thing. Um, known each other all their lives. Beck is the best friend of Ruby's brother. And they reconnect the weekend of the brother's wedding. Um, there's chemistry. There's always been chemistry. They've always kind of had a thing. Um, but it's that whole, I'm your brother's best friend. You're my brother's kid sister. What are we doing? Um, one day they get together and they have a few too many drinks together. And all of a sudden, um, not really sure how the night ended, but a marriage license shows up in her mail with his name on it. So she's suddenly married to Beck. Um, and then she finds out she's pregnant, which makes things even more complicated. But his company, a longtime friend and employee and a man that he thought he could trust, has gotten his company connected to some really shady people and engaged in some really shady stuff that could result in a long prison term for him if he's not careful. So he decides to cooperate with the feds, but has to go into hiding for a while. But she's not sure she wants to follow him, but he wants to be there for the birth of his child. And um, so there's this intense, are they going to be safe? Are the bad guys going to find them? Oh no, they did. Now what happens, right? Um, but it's a great story. It's, it's The love story is so believable, again, because Beck and Ruby have a history so the insta-love thing, the love at first sight, the love right away thing. Uh, but there are surprise identities, people who've been manipulating individuals in the story from prior to the beginning of the novel. Like there are people you meet at the beginning that are in their lives that are actually not who they claim to be. It's just there was this romantic but mystery suspense element tied in. And I really, really loved the storyline. I loved not only their romance, but this other, their lives were in danger and they were fighting against bad guys kind of storyline. Um, so Beverly Evans is definitely now on my radar as one of those authors I need to keep reading. Um, this next book blew me away. Um, it's not even out until March, so I feel kind of lucky because I've already gotten to read it and none of you get to see it for another like two months. Um, it's called Please See Us. It is phenomenal. It's actually probably best described as an atmospheric novel, meaning its whole purpose is to make you feel something. And boy, howdy, does Caitlin Mullen do it. Um, it's the story of a serial killer um, in Atlantic City. And Caitlin's descriptions of Atlantic City um, as this, you know, it's almost one of these, she used to be a grand lady and now she's just kind of pathetic. Um, she talks about what the buildings used to be like and what it was like when Atlantic City was in her heyday as a place for people to go for, you know, just a weekend of entertainment and what's happened since it's fallen on harder times. Um Interestingly enough, this is a book that passes the Bechdel test, because one of the big things about the Bechdel test, it was originally applied to movies, it now is applied to books. Um, at least two female characters have both a first and last name, and they don't spend the entire conversation, every conversation they have is not about the romances in their lives. This fits, because the two women that meet, one of them had grown up in Atlantic City, she moved away to the big city, had a relationship very publicly explode, and I mean the opening of an art show at an art gallery publicly explode. Um, and you get teaser pieces of it all throughout the story until closer to the end of the novel when they give you everything. And you realize just how awful her ex was to her. Uh, but she comes back home to sort of try to get her feet under her again. She works a job for a while to try to get some money saved up to get back out into the big city and, and do what she loves in the world of art. Um, she meets a young lady who's lived in Atlantic City all of her life being raised by an aunt who turns out to be a less than stellar human being. Just gonna throw that out there. Um, and she is a psychic. Um, now, there are a lot of charlatans in Atlantic City that fake at it, but this girl legitly gets visions, um, and they're not always pleasant. Um, not only does she get visions, but if she's seeing visions of those who have been killed or hurt, she can actually experience some of that. Um, Caitlin Mullen pulls you in right away. The very first people you meet in the book are two of the serial killer's murder victims. They're lying dead in a swampy area but she describes them as though they're still alive, as though they still have wants, as though they're begging someone, they're, they're calling out for somebody to see them and to know that they're there and to fight for justice. Um, she creates this wild sense of empathy for two characters that you don't meet until they're already murder victims. She hadn't established any relationships for them within the, in the story. You had not met them prior. You had no chance to build up a relationship with them in the book. They're just dead in this field, but she tugs at your heart. It, it, the point of an atmospheric novel is to make you feel something. And Caitlin Mullen 
goes for it hard in this book. She pulls on all sorts of emotions. The the tension of, oh no, the serial killer. She also has no problem letting you build those relationships with a character and then letting that character fall victim to the serial killer. That happens a couple of times in the book where somebody that you kind of start to get to know, all of a sudden you're like, oh crap. Okay, fine. Guess she's gone now too. Um, it's It's not a satisfying happily ever after ending, but I loved it even more for that. An atmospheric novel that never let up because in the end, the serial killer just stops. You as the reader never know who he is. It's not that the characters in the book don't know. Caitlin never tells you as the reader. You never know who this person is and you never know why the killing stops. It just does. So it's this very unnerved, unsettling, well, did they move on somewhere else? Is it good to start up again somewhere else? Or is it good to start up again here? Are they just on a vacation? Did they get arrested for a traffic ticket? Like what? Why? You don't get any of those answers. And in a weird way, it's the most satisfying ending I could have asked for because the point of an atmospheric novel is to make you feel and it just left me feeling very unsettled. And I kind of liked it. Um, definitely an author I will be checking out again. I was only able to give it five stars. I would have given it so much more. It's probably the, no, 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 not probably. It's the best thing I read this year, which granted you can say, well, the year's only a couple of weeks old, but it's going to take a lot for another novel to come along and knock this off of my number one read of the year place. Cause it was just that emotionally engaging. Um, this next one is going to be a really unpopular opinion. So I'm going to apologize right now if I offend any of you. I read this book because one of the year long reading prompts I'm doing calls for me to read a, um, a, a book about a book club. Um, this is a number one New York Times bestseller and Netflix is making it into a movie and I did not care for the book at all. So I apologize in advance if you loved it. Uh, let's see if I can get in here. It's not going to show very well. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society. Now, Somebody said to me, you didn't like the format. I just felt nothing for the characters. And if, if the author can't make me care about the characters, I have a hard time caring about the story. Um, it probably doesn't help that I came off of Please See Us, in which the author was able to make me care for a dead person that I never had a chance to meet alive in the book. Um, she just did not make me care for the characters at all. Um, I, I wasn't invested in what happened to them. And, and that's hard for me to care for the story if I don't care for the people involved in the story. Somebody said to me, well, do you think it's possible you didn't like the format? Because the whole format is done in letters written from this reporter who somehow connects to this literary society that had um, was birthed out of a mistake, kind of a, a lie to cover their tracks. Um, the island of Guernsey was occupied during World War II by the Nazis and they had a curfew. And um, livestock was a prime, like the, the Nazis came through and stole all the pigs and the chickens and all of that. And this group of friends had managed to keep a pig hidden. Um, and they were having a, a feast one night, enjoying the meal, and they ran late. And so they were late after curfew getting back to their homes. And one of the women who had been there blurted out, we were having a literary society meeting and we didn't pay attention at the time. So they have to come in the next day and give the same story to the commandant who wants people to see that the Nazis encourage culture and learning and good breeding. So he encourages them to keep meeting. So they have to keep meeting and reading books to keep up this lie of we were a literary society meeting. Um, so all of it takes place between this, this um, journalist writer in, in London who connects with these people on the Island of Guernsey um, her relationships. She's writing to her agent who also happens to be a, lifelong friend. His sister is one of her best friends. Um, there's another man who's an agent, but then things get a little romantic and then they fall apart. And I, it's, I just didn't care about any of the characters and it made it really hard for me to care about the story when the characters didn't engender any kind of empathy or compassion or sympathy or, oh, please let things work out for them kind of feeling. So I just, it wasn't, I think I gave it two stars maybe just because I did like the format. Um, somebody challenged me on that. Like I said, somebody asked me if I didn't like the format. I, last year I read, where are you Bernadette, which is written in a very different format. And I loved that book, loved that book. It was a five star. Um, so the format doesn't bother me. A different format sometimes is the way to get me into a book. Give me something that's a little bit of a different approach, but this one just didn't do it for me at all. This next book, now luckily I came off of that into a really phenomenal book. Again, I picked this one up at the recommendation of a friend. Um, I have a 
an online book lover that I have gotten to know. Um, a friend online who's also a book lover like me that we've connected. Thank you for Twitter and Discord and things like that. And we both happened to be, I mentioned that I was doing um, a couple of year-long reading challenges and she and I happened to be doing one of the same ones, which calls for a book by a trans or a binary author. So she recommended this one. It was one she had previously read. Um, I jumped into it and absolutely fell in love with the story. It's a powerful, powerful story. Jennifer Finney Boylan, who is herself trans, has written a book called entitled The Long Black Veil, in which a trans person has to decide whether to resurrect what she sees as a dead identity to clear a friend who's suspected of murder. One event, one mistake, literally a case of mistaken identity, takes seven lives and just destroys their trajectory. Um, eight friends went into this abandoned prison the day after two of them had gotten married and the bride disappears. 30 years later, they find her body her skull, her skeleton. Um, and one of the friends falls under um, suspicion. And um, this woman, Judith, has to decide if she's going to completely gut her own life and, and bring up a dead identity. Um, she's got a husband, she's got a son. And does she reveal all of this to them, things that they didn't even know? Um, but can she let her friend go down for a murder he didn't commit? She knows he didn't commit. Um, it was it was a powerful story. There's this great, the main character of Judith makes this great comment because the story is told in Judith's first person perspective. Um, there's this great comment that Judith makes for the reader's benefit only um, that maybe all we really need to do is concentrate on loving others. We don't need a, an answer to the existence of the cosmos. We don't need to understand the philosophy of why the world exists and why we're here. Maybe we just need to focus on loving other people and letting them be who they are um, and loving them and, and trusting that they will, or with the help of some higher power or whatever your belief system is, that they will figure it out in the end. Um, really powerful story. Really powerful story of how far is she willing to go to save a friend and risk her own happiness and sense of well-being and sense of security? Um, is she comfortable enough being the person she believes she is to admit that this other identity existed at one point in time and use that identity as a way, uh, because it was under that identity that she can prove this man's innocence. Um, really good book, really good book. Um, powerfully written, well-developed characters. None of them were perfect, none of them were wholly evil. Um, some of them really wanted to improve themselves and be better people. Some of them kind of wanted them to get what was coming to them. Um, some of them started things with the best of intentions, and, and those best of intentions went horribly, horribly sideways. Um, but a powerful book. Definitely one I would highly recommend. Um, this next book is a part of the book quest, which I will put that link in the, the video description. It's a fun little online book reading challenge um running through the 25th of this month um i don't know if i'm getting all the books done because i've got a lot going on but i'm close um i've got a couple of shorter reads coming up that i think i'll be able to breeze through pretty quickly um this one covered a prompt in that that book quest it also covered a prompt for uh, the 52 books in 52 weeks and it's been on my tbr for a while i wanted to read it and just finally got around to it um, ironically i had it on my wish list on amazon for a long time and then Amazon said, hey, we'll give you a gift card towards the purchase of that book if you buy it by this deadline. And so I think I got the Kindle version. It should have been like nine or 10 bucks. And I think I got it for like two by the time the discounts and everything kicked in. Um, because I also had a gift card that I could use. Um, Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schulte. Such a good story. Such a good story. Um, it's about a realm that was divided into four. Um, and each region has has very specific traits and very specific strengths and weaknesses and contribute something very specific to the region um but somebody is trying to kill all four of the queens the problem is these queens never leave the palace they, they grow up in their own regions but they never leave the palace once they come to be queen they're never allowed to leave um they are expected to produce an heir but that's a very business like this man would be a good match for you let's make a baby thank you so much for your services please go home um and then the children are sent away to be raised by someone back in the region that the queen is from um and then when she dies that heir comes and takes over the throne but this is an heir who takes over a throne of a mother she never really knew um 
powerful story, really good story, really good fantasy world building, um, twists and turns and suspense and oh my gosh moments all the way through the last third of the book or so. Um, it's just, it's, it's a powerful read. It's highly recommended if you like a good fantasy book, especially where all of the strong characters are women. There's a lot of really strong women in this book, which I love. This next one, um, I picked up, I was supposed to pick up the first book that I touched on a bookshelf with my eyes closed. Now I cheated just a little bit because the first book I touched was book two in this series. I wanted to not start in the middle of the series, especially because it is not a standalone. Book two is not a standalone. You need to have read the first one. So I cheated a little bit and went back and got book one. Um, of Fire and Stars by Audrey Coulthurst. Um, it's a queer norm book. Um, there are relationships of all sorts in here. And the woman who is promised to marry the prince starts to fall in love with his sister. The problem is not that she's falling in love with a woman. It's that she's falling in love with someone who's not the prince. Um, because there are you'll 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 see references to a soldier and his husband or this washerwoman and her wife so um the same sex couple is a thing in this culture it's just she's promised to the prince and there are all sorts of alliances and and things that will fall apart if she doesn't marry him um so it's a huge problem and she not only that but she has magic abilities in a kingdom that has outlawed the use of magic but the problem is by outlawing use of magic, there's residual magic in the atmosphere that is building up. And those who have magical abilities are finding it hard to control them because they're not allowed to burn off any of the, sort of burn off the magic in the atmosphere. Um, and so she comes to this city from a different place and finds her magic even harder to control. But she's supposed to marry the future king of a realm where her magic is illegal. As if that wasn't enough. At the end of the book, um, Enemies have been discovered that were thought to be allies and sort of a cliffhanger ending to lead you into the second book. Um, uh, Dana wants to figure out how to control her magic and Mare and she have admitted they're in love with each other and Mare obviously wants to help her. So Mare finds a way to get herself. They let people believe that, that Dana is dead. Um, Mare finds a way to get herself to the kingdom where Dana wants to go to get help so she can be with her while she tries to figure out how to control her magic. Um, and she's not a typical princess anyway. Uh, Mare would prefer to be on horseback dressed in, in trousers and comfortable clothes as opposed to being courted by some lord in a fancy dress and pearls. She's just not a girly girl. She's not a typical princess. So being an ambassador in a foreign country is far more her thing than, than sitting at home and looking cute and making a good marriage and being a good hostess. Um, so yeah, it's it's a great book. I, I loved everything about it. Now I want to read the sequel to see because their lives are in such a evil right now. I want them to get a happy ending. Um, I won a bunch of books in a blizzard of books drawing. Daphne Loveling was the one I found it on her social media. So thank you, Daphne. Um, they're all motorcycle club romance books. Never have read very many of them. This was the first one out of the, the win that I read. They're all autographed by the authors, which is very fun. Some of them were even, but the really cute thing is some of them even sent a lot of like bookmarks. I got some swag out of video. <coughs> but this was the first one I read. This is book one in the Kings of Corruption series called Riker. Um, I fell in love with him. He's, he's the bad boy that, yeah. Bad boy with a heart of gold. Yes, I know. Stereotypical uh, motorcycle club trope, I'm sure. Not that I've read a lot of them, but I'm guessing. Um, but he meets a woman who is a hospice nurse. She works in a nursing home and specializes in working with those who are nearing the end of their life. And um, the man who's been like his surrogate dad all of his life in the club um, is dying. And when he gets so bad that he can't take care of himself, the club insists that he come to stay in this nursing home. And he spends every possible minute by his bedside. So he and Charlotte, who he calls Charlie, get to know each other there, and then they find out that her sister has angered a different motorcycle club. That's why they're living where they are now. Um, and one of those guys goes rogue and comes after the two of them, and so Riker takes it upon himself to protect them. Needless to say, he and Charlie are going to fall madly in love, but he's trying not to fall in love with a woman who is a fit, he believes, for the lifestyle that he leads. So um, Charlie's pretty awesome. I kind of love her. Like, Riker so worried about protecting her, and after a while, she's like, "Would you stop? I'm a big girl. I can take care of myself. Quit being such a protective little nanny." Um, 
so yeah, it's, I liked, I think one of the reasons I liked it is because when Riker tries to get all macho and oh, I'm not good enough for you, Charlie's like, screw you, I can make up my own mind. So I think one of the reasons I liked this book so much was because Charlie was, she was awesome. I loved her a lot. Um, she was just about as feisty and sassy as Riker could possibly have been. This next book is the first fiction novel by this author. I arced it for one of the websites, Book Sirens, Hidden Gems. No, I think it was Book Sirens. It wasn't Hidden Gems. I think it was Book Sirens. I arched this one. This author has written um, some nonfiction, but this is his first foray into the fiction world. This is alternative history fiction, and I loved it. It's called Wolf in the Jungle. It is post-World War II. Um, we've all heard the theories. Hitler survived and ran away to Brazil or Bolivia or whatever, somewhere in South America. Um, so there's this elite team I'm trying to figure out how to describe them um, that are one of those. You don't exist. If you get caught, we're going to deny any involvement with you. We're going to deny any knowledge of what you've done. Um, it's uh, I'm trying to remember what the group was called. This is terrible. I should know this. Um, do, 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 do. Um, it's a team that has been very Nesher unit. Thank you wasn't coming up with the name. Um, it's a team that has been very specifically recruited because of their um, heritage. They're all Jewish, Jewish Americans, Jewish Europeans, um, and they are going after those who managed to escape Nuremberg, who managed to evade capture, um, and they don't always make sure they bring them in alive. <laughs> it starts right away with things going sideways in, a, in an attempt to bring in a man that they thought would possibly know where in South America, others had gone. They discovered that not only are there um, members of the Nazi party living in South America, but they had built this entire little city that they're living in. Um, and the Fuhrer is also there. So he survived in this version of the story. Um, it's intense. It's action-packed. It does not stop. Um, I want to see more fiction from Evan Kale. This was a good book. This is a great alternate history. It will help if you know a little bit about... Um, World War II because they'll name names that unless you know who they are they don't give a lot of background they just expect you to know but when they say she turned the corner and came face to face with Eichmann they want you to know who that man was um they don't give you a lot of the personal backgrounds of those who were major players in the Nazi party historically so if you don't know a lot of those kinds of names you may end up a little confused in the story because the author just assumes you do and I did, so I was good. I read a lot of nonfiction around that era of history, so I was okay with, with the different names. Um, but a really good book, a really good first fiction start from author Evan Kale. Lastly, I just finished this one today. Um, it's called The Curse of the Iron Skull. This is book two in the Dust McAllen Adventures. C.K. Birch has created this amazing character. If you like Clive Cussler, Indiana Jones, that the librarians, that type of adventure seeking some history tied in a lot of mythology connected kind of thing um this is the book for you his stories take place during the nazi rise to power prior to world war ii the first two books anyway i'm not sure where the third one's gonna fall um not a genre i normally read my husband um is big into the political intrigue stuff when we early on in our marriage he read the first clive Kessler book he'd ever come across um I've read some Cussler and enjoyed it, but it's not something I necessarily run to on a regular basis. I found the first one because a young lady who was one of my stage managers years ago for a senior high production knows the author. And she had said something about his book on her social media. So I was like, I'm always looking for new authors, especially indie authors. I went and checked it out. As soon as I finished the first book, I went to Amazon and bought the next two. And I don't normally go after this genre, but his is so fun. Um, he ties in just enough history with just enough mythology to make it really fun um this one takes place like i said just before world, world war ii there's an iron skull that he finds that um starts to wreak havoc on his life and the lives of everybody around him um there's really not a lot i can say without starting to give away major plot points or having to give away major plot points of the first book because they do connect there are people that show up from one book to the next um but it's a, it's a great adventure, high adventure read. Like he uses the name of actual, an actual pirate and then ties in some Norse mythology for fun. Um, 
great story, great book. I definitely can't wait to finish up. I, I shouldn't say that. I'm torn because there's one more book in the series and I really want to read it. But I also know that that means I'm done reading Dustin McCallum stories after I read that book. So I'm kind of torn. I don't want to give him up. It's a great, it's a great series. Um, so that's where I am. Um, I've completed three of the titles in the, um, the, the book quest, the Wolf of the Jungle, Curse of the Iron Skull, and Four Dead Queens are all a part of that. Um, I've also completed several on the year-long reading I've been doing. That was the book of has literally started two days ago, three days ago, four days ago, something like that. Um, that one runs January 15th through, um, February 15th and has all kinds of fun points and, and reading prompts attached. So you'll be hearing more about that one in coming weeks. Um, so yeah, I know this one ran a little bit longer than I normally do, but like I said, I hadn't done an update yet. So you figure I try to keep them around 10 to 15 minutes and it was 30. So sorry, this one's a little longer, but it's, you know, half a month's worth of updating. So um, let me know in the comments what books you're reading, what reading goals you've set for yourself this year. Um, have a great weekend.